Prod, organizers of the conference. A uh, very good morning to you. And let me express my pleasure in being here with all of you, with uh, people from the industry, from the IP, legal fraternity, and have and I'm happy to have this opportunity to talk to all of you together. Let me talk, start with this quote from a very famous judgment, which anybody who has been working with the IP uh, firmament in India would be familiar with. This is the Bishwanath Prasad Radesham judgment, which said the object of patent law is to encourage scientific research, new technology, and industrial progress. Grant of exclusive privilege to own, use, or sell the method or the product patented for a limited period stimulates new inventions of commercial utility. The price of the grant of the monopoly is the disclosure of the invention at the patent office, which after the expiry of the fixed period of the monopoly passes into the public domain. All of intellectual property is part of a very carefully crafted bargain where the interest of the public and the interest of the inventor, the creator, both are balanced. And that is the effort of the entire IP system and that is what we need to sustain. While the inventor or the creator gets exclusive rights, a kind of monopoly, but in exchange for that, the government demands from him disclosure of the invention, disclosure of the creation, so that it goes into the body of knowledge in the world, which increases the body of knowledge and can be used thereafter for further development of new technology, new innovations. And that is the way it goes forward. In this crowd, I would not like to define the various kind of IPRs except saying that we have patents, industrial design rights, trademarks, geographical indications, copyrights, protection of integrated uh, layout designs, integrated circuits, trade secrets. The importance of IP can be gauged from the numbers that we see now. The patent applications in the world surpassed 2.5 million in 2013. China, US, Japan, the Republic of Korea and the EPO still remain the top five offices. Between 2012 and 2013, the growth was of around 9%, which passed the 2 million mark in 2011. The applications have risen 2.5-fold 2 since 1995. And driving that strong growth, that surge, have been filings in China and the US. Patent applications, 81% were filed in five offices. China, the US, China obviously was the largest. Japan, Republic of Korea, and the EPO. The percentage of change is also very instructive. In China, in one year, the growth was 26.4%. The US was 5.3%. Japan went down, five, minus 4.2. The Republic of Korea went up 8.3. EPO went down, minus 0 0.4. And almost a third of the applications in 2012 apply to also to the five fastest growing fields of technology. Computer technology, electrical machines, measurements, digital communication, medical technology. Trademark filings in 2013, it went to up to around 5 million in 2013, the total number of applications in the world. They have risen 2.7 fold since 1995. And Asia has significantly increased its world share from 35% in 2004 to 48% in 2013. It's a growing sign, it's a good trend. Again, I would not like to go too much into detail about what are the benefits. You know more than anybody else what the benefits are. It does contribute to the economy. It contributes to innovation, it promotes innovation. It gives a sustainability to innovation. It gives an incentive to inventors, to companies to continue to innovate 
to reinvest into their innovation sectors of their companies. It benefits the consumer and society. It provides consumers with the latest technology, new products, new processes. It is what drives the world forward. The companies that use IPR have generally succeeded better than those which have not. We have companies, the top largest companies in the world, a large part of their revenues come from IPRs. Microsoft, around 70% of its revenues come from consumer licensing or commercial licensing. Apple, IBM licenses for more than $1 billion per year. The companies which have realized the importance of IPRs are also going to be the companies of the future. This, I would just like to show to you the way the filing of patents reflects the state of development of economies. The, we have India, Russia, Germany, China, Japan, and the USA. There's a clear trend where these uh, economies have started developing since earlier. The patent applications are also on the rise. They are on the much higher side. Now China has, of, of course, taken over as the highest filer from the US. Other countries are going up, and it is purely a function of the state of development of an area that the innovation is also a reflection of that, and the patent applications are also a reflection of that. We are an ancient civilization, a young country. We are a country where even by the year 2030, it is said that the median age will be 32 years. But we do realize and have to realize that the future of progress is in innovation, in creativity. We have been touted to show around 6.7% CHR GR growth till 2030. But this will not happen without innovation. And with innovation, with further creativity, we can leapfrog over other countries. And the use of IPRs in that is very important because that gives the push to innovation. We have over 2.3 million graduates. 0 0.7 million postgraduates come out every year. We have the second largest pool of scientists and engineers in the world. We have the highest number of qualified engineers, second on trained doctors. We have a number of universities, colleges, research associations. The infrastructure is there. The manpower is there, the brains are there. What remains is the effort, the realization of the use of intellectual property, of innovation to grow further. IPR laws in India. Four of the laws, patents, designs, trademarks, and geographical indications, they are administered by the Controller General of Patents, Designs, and Trademarks. We have patent offices. This is especially for the benefit of people from abroad. Patent offices at our four metros, Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, and Kolkata. We have trademark offices at all the four metros and at Ahmedabad. We, had a we have a geographical indications registry at Chennai. And we have an institute of intellectual property management at Nagpur. There are other IPR laws administered by other ministries. The Ministry of Human Resource Development looks after the copyright law. The Department of IT looks at the Semiconductor Integrated Circuits Layout Designs Act. And the Department of Agriculture and Cooperation looks after the plant varieties and farmer rights uh, laws. Trends in IP filing. China now has 8,25,000 applications were filed in 2013. The U.S. had 5,671,000. We had 43,000. What has been unfortunate over time is that although the growth is sustained, the filing by Indians and by residents is much, much less than from non-residents. Even in 2013, it was only 75 percent by residents. Thankfully, it is growing. It was earlier 20%, which has gone up to 25%. But there is a lot that needs to be done that requires a spurt in the ecosystem for innovation in the country. The number of patents in force in India in 2013 was 
45,103. Out of that, 82% is owned by non-residents. This can give us two indications. One, of course, that filing hitherto has been more by non-residents, around 80% has been non-residents. And non-residents have also tried to keep them renewed in force because they have realized the importance of IP and the protection of IP even in India. The average age of patents in force in India is 11.6 years. Interestingly, we, it's the second highest, which places it among the second. The reason could be, of course, that people do see a large market in India. The market is very large. The use of patents is seen and the uh, companies that look ahead realize that the market is there to be exploited and the patent that is there, they do want to keep it in force. The statistics in trademarks. In the last year, in 2013, we had 202,000 odd applications in trademarks in India. China, of course, had 1,800,000 plus applications. The U.S. had 486,000. We are, we have a considerably large number of applications in trademarks coming in India and the numbers are from Indians is also very high. We have 94 percent applications from residents. Trademarks in force, we, we have 979,000 trademarks in force in India, which is quite high. We are the fourth as far as trademarks in force are concerned, which means that the trademarks that are registered in India, companies are interested in keeping it, for, it in force. So that is a good sign. National IP trends. Patents since 2007-8 to 13-14. The filing has gone up from 35,000 odd to 43,000. The resident filing has gone up from 17% to 25%. That is a good sign but it is still leaves a lot to be desired. Trademarks from 2007-8 to 13-14, it went up from 1,23,000 to over 200,000. The resident applications have remained constant at around 94%. Designs, it has gone up from 6,400 to 8,500 with over 60% resident applications. GIs, it has gone up from 37 to 75. Most of it are resident applications. There was an aberration in between, which requires a lot of time to tell you about. I'll skip that. Processing has also been increasing. We have, uh, in the year 2011 12, 11,000 patent applications were examined. In the year 13 14, 18,000 were examined. In fact, uh, because there was talk in the beginning of the number of applications being examined is low, let me also tell you that we did a comparison with other countries of the number of examinations done by patent examiners in India. In the last year, one patent examiner in India examined 140 applications. As against the US and the EPO, it was 50 and 70. So the examiners in India are doing their best. It is the lack of human resource, which I'll talk about a little later that has been creating a backlog that is also being taken care of. It is not because people have not been working. We, the examiners in India are working more than in most other countries. Trademarks, we got 200,000 applications last year. We were able to examine 203,000. Designs also and GIs, we have been able to keep up almost with the number of filings. Some recent initiatives that we have taken, which I would like to tell you about. We have tried to improve the ease of access to the patent office, to the trademark office, to all our offices. We introduced comprehensive e-filing where every document, every form can be filed online, both on the patent side and on the trademark side. Nobody needs to come to the office to file anything. We have given a comprehensive payment gateway that was also launched last year where over 70 banks, internet banking, all debit cards, all credit cards can be used for filing any document in the patent or trademark office. We have complete electronic processing. 
in the patent and trademark offices. Every paper that comes in is scanned, digitized, uploaded. You can see every paper that is issued from the office or received in the office on our websites. We have an entry in the national phase can be done by filing form one and last page of the specification only because we are streaming from the WIPO patent scope the entire specifications from WIPO itself from for PCT documents. We have also started giving incentives in filing. There is a 10 percent differential between online and offline filing now. Interestingly, in 2014, we had a change in the rules which brought on this 10 percent differential in February 2014. And between February and March in patents, the online filing went up from 30 percent to 75 percent. That is a huge change that has op happened, which a small tweaking in policy has made possible. We are going to very shortly bring the same thing in trademarks. We have brought in a new category of small entities, both in patents and in designs, which MSMEs anywhere in the world can take the benefit of it, and they get 50 percent discount on filing as compared to large companies. We have tried to bring in a lot of quality consciousness in the office. We have brought in quality management systems in the office. We have separate manuals of practice and procedure. We have specialized technology groups which examine specialized applications. We have brought out examination guidelines in traditional knowledge, in biotechnology, in pharmaceutical related inventions. And let me say that a lot of you have been part of the discussions we held with stakeholders in bringing out these guidelines. We do believe in carrying out substantial discussions with stakeholders before finalizing our own guidelines. We have comprehensive training. We expose our officials to foreign training. We have quality management teams at all our locations. We have done a lot to bring about transparency and disseminate information about IP applications. We have real-time status of IP applications with entire file wrappers and e-registers.